So, welcome to my first tutorial video on convergence. Maybe there will be more in the future, but for now I will go over every really important trick that you need to know if you want to run convergence. Of this I mean speedrunning, challenge running, any kind that you actually need to or want to, any skip that you need, any skipped trick and everything. I will maybe cut this down to separate parts or put them all in one video, but uh, well, you will see in the video then, I guess. If you're completely new to the game, I would not recommend to do this. Of course, if you wanna, you can do whatever you want, but I would recommend playing the the game at least once. <laughs> Don't need to be a hundred percent, just just once. And yeah. Uh, so now that you're confused, in the top left corner you can see something called uh, the CTB, the Convergence Toolbox. Um, a fellow from the Convergence Speedrun server, or runs server in general, um, made this tool, which is basically a cheat box more or less for uh, um, us runners. You can enable an auto splitter for live split. You can show your abilities that I press on the bottom right, right here. So if I jump, you see a J. If I attack, you see BA for basic attack. If I press Y, it's for time winder, but I don't have it right now. So you see my button inputs here. The gizmos are these boxes right here which have different meanings. Whites are safe points and checkboxes where you respawn when you die. Blue are cutscenes or end of cutscenes sometimes. Red are fight arenas. And I think those are the three main ones. There are some green ones, but I'm not sure what they are really. I think spawn boxes, like actual spawn boxes, but yeah. Uh, there's this, this option where you can show uh, the route of uh, the world record. Not really important. And God mode, which enables all these things down here, which where I can with which I can teleport myself around to different rooms, get myself different ability sets, so on and so on. And uh, with all of these, I'm gonna show you all the important skips you need to know. So first of all, the there are two or three main things that the, the most important necessities if you really want to run this game. You cannot get around it. It's, it needs you need to have these. The first one is roll canceling. You already saw me doing one at the beginning right here when I did this. Usually when you roll with Echo, he kind of stops for a moment and then you walk into slow walking speed. Or you walk in slow walking speed. But if you press an attack Right after you roll, you cancel the roll stop. That's why we call it roll cancel. And you keep the faster movement speed of the roll. If you kind of see how fast I am, and now how fast I normally walk, right? There are two types of roll cancels. I will come to one later in more detail, but you can also jump right after you roll, like this. It's also an option, but it's usually rolling with an attack because you have a lot of space like this. You can also integrate this into movement. And Yeah, what you just saw, um, what I did is a faster way of dealing 5 damage. It's not so important, it just saves a little bit of time. So usually if you do your full combo, the last one takes a little bit too long and you can't react onto anything if this happens. So what we do is we do 3 attacks to the side, 1 upwards and then 3 attacks to the side again. So it's this. Takes a 
takes roughly the same time, it's a little bit faster and you can react to it because you can just roll out of the fourth attack. So that's just a mi little minor thing. And you can roll out of any button animation, which is very important later on. And as you can see, I always try to get roll cancels in wherever I can because the road, the start of the roll is still faster than anything else, right? As you can see, I always get a slight boost to it, right? So right here, I'm going to show you the second a second thing, not really that important, but saves some time, is momentum control. Basically, oh. momentum control, momentum control is it if you kind of boost or slow down your momentum while on objects or on hanging walls or whatever. And we don't use this too often, but we use it on these sling uh, sling ropes, sling bars, whatever they are really. And basically, usually you don't get up here because it's too, doesn't uh, sling you high enough. But with momentum control, you can buffer an upwards attack while you're letting go of the rope and you get up here because that extra momentum that you get from the attack slings you up here. You will show the, uh, <clears throat> you will, you will see this later. Uh, again, as you can see, I uh, casually do like roll jump cancels um, while I'm fighting because it's faster. Because you have that extra speed to move away, so I roll jump all the way everywhere. So this is everything, everything like this. Also, something that you will notice here and later on in different points of the game, when you want to speedrun, you have to disable show tutorial prompts, so this, where it opens the map for you or opens the bench for you the first time, opens any like uh, menus where you can buy abilities, um, they are disabled and you can just continue walking. So yeah, now we have corner break and rewind, and with this, the actual game begins, because Roll cancelling is just the first of many important things you need to know. I will now no clip to the next important uh, part of the game, which is Jeanette. So in speedrunning, we use corner break in two different ways. There is a there is a little trick later on you will see uh, that I will show you in fan logs, and. The second thing is, of course, killing bosses way, 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 way faster. And some bosses have a limit have a limit on how much they actually can take. Um, um, on how much, how many hits you need for them to be in the right range for Chrono Break to be used exactly to kill. For Jeanette, the beginning boss battle at the start of the game, it's ten damage. So if you do. You hit her 10 times or um, it counts twice if you hit her with the end of the normal base combo, which of course we don't want to use if we can avoid it. But it's 10 damage and I always count in my head. I, I can't really count out loud while I'm doing the fight. But you will notice that I'm trying to hit her 10 times and then instantly activate Chrono Break. That's exact kill. The, 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 the end was a little bit slower, but she walked away and I wanted that forward momentum, so I can actually hit her. Um, slight, slight adjustment. So now here we couldn't, of course, again, use like momentum control for this, but there is a little extra thing I can show you, which is not really important, but uh, it's just fancy. Basically, if you let go from a rope and buffer your time winder back to you while it's in like a slot like this, 
you actually stop your momentum upwards and you land exactly on the ledge here that you need for, that you want to oh let me just try to show this like this so you don't go all the way up and you can walk to the side faster okay so now now we have time winder i showed you already roll cancelling Roll cancelling is one of the most important things, of the three main most important, thi most important things. The second thing that is most important are whirlwinders. That is something that we found a few months back and it's this. Those are whirlwinders. Every single hit of these counts as a hit but not quite yet. Right now, we don't have an extra module that we need, and I will get to that later, which make time um, whirlwinders the most OP thing in the whole game. But right now, they have a certain rhythm that you need to hit. It's like this. If you go faster, then you will hit, um, you will hit but de don't deal damage, and you have these kind of blind spots, and you're actually slower. So you want to actually hit this really good rhythm, and you will. I will just use this on these enemies right here, and you will see what I mean. And there is an arena coming up where I can also show you this a little bit more. Later on, there's always some uh, also some sideways momentum control on these sling bars. But yeah, we, here we have another one of these momentum controls upwards, where you can just get up here without having to cling on the edge first. And here in this battle you will see... Oh, let's take this slow. Oh. And I will explain how they work in a minute. I just want to showcase actually how how this rhythm goes. So now let me show you how world winders work. We call them this because you need time winder for it, and then world winder because of whirlwind attacks, right? So usually, if you up attack, you have to slight delay. And you can see in the bottom right, I'm spamming the button, right? So that's not what we want, right? But there is a thing where you can attack twice very fast if you use Time Winder. So you saw at the bottom right I have basic attack, Time Winder basic attack to the very right. So I attack twice with throwing my Time Winder in between because it skips the animation that you actually need to go back to your main position. So if you press the buttons for basic attack and time winder at the same time, it looks like this. But now we don't want this because this is a little bit too slow still, because you have to slight break at the end of the third attack. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and it's, it's a little bit too slow. So what we do to cancel that out is just up attack with it. And if you throw your time winder, this is not longer possible. That's why I rewind it when I threw my time winder. I need my time winder back. But those, this is how time uh, whirlwinders are done. But you want a slight difference in the button timing. You want to attack first, then throw the time winder. But the the main way to practice is just press them at the same time right so if your time winder is out you can't do this you need them you need the time winder on your body because you can't access the animation to throw the time winder when it's already out right i'm pressing the button nothing happens um so well winding is the second really 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 important thing and 
of course roll cancelling uh, either with a jump or with an attack is the second or the first important thing now let's go to a different game state usually in a speed run when you follow the main route that we use you have around 135 um, cogs money right now when you get to this bench which means when you get to here you can buy this module this is the only module you need okay there is not a single other one this is the only one you need you will make it here and you um, enable it here and you will never take it off ever again the whole run maybe in challenge runs but I, I don't really see any case for it right now. So usually you equip this and you stay with it. The Nitro module, what it says, what it does, is increases movement at attack speed for a short time after rewinding. Which means if I revi rewind and then do whirlwinders, you will see how fast this gets. You can really deal out a lot of damage really fast with this now. So those are the real world winders. And you're gonna use those from here to the end of the game usually. And just to show you this, I'm gonna travel through through the room real quick and just go to to this one. And you will just see the first like the middle boss fight of factory mode with this equipped, right? I have it equipped. And um, actually I don't want this, so I'm just gonna press this button, which removes skills and other gadgets that I have, besides Nitro. And that was a fuck up, right? I threw my time under three times in this fight, which of course you don't want to do, usually. And... That's what Nitro does, right? It gives you a way faster well winder. But that is not everything that Nitro does. TLDR to Nitro module. It's the most important thing to any run in this game. The Nitro module enabled all the skips and tricks that we found for the speedrunning route. There are some skips you do without Nitro, but only for challenge runs. But everything needs Nitro. Everything. It's so important because this is not all. Usually, when you get to this point in the map, right, you go over here, go down here, get parallel convergence, and then you go up to the right side over here, go up to this room, do this whole sequence where you have to hit the four buttons, then you go back here, and then you go down to Sarkon. What Nitro allows you to do is backtrack over here and get up here and get up to very different places later on in the run and do some very very crazy skips i will not show the skips or most of the skips here but i will show you how nitro jump works nitro jumping is what it's called so nitro jumps how they how they are done how they work and some specifics that you need to know so if you use nitro and jump it's a normal jump you see how high i get Right? It's, it's roughly above that line in that orange orange bar. If I use Nitro and jump, I don't get any higher. Okay. The thing with the game mechanics is that an attack gives you momentum. Like up forwards momentum. You see that I just by attacking I walk forwards. Right? This momentum can convert into upwards momentum and you jump and attack at the same time. Like this so you get a little bit higher than if you just jump which you think but it's not the case jumping and attacking does nothing but with nitro 
jumping and attacking slightly like just jumping and then attacking with a slight difference in button press timing gives you height as you can see the better your timing with this is the, the higher you get actually so you can also boost yourself forward with it like this but it's usually taken for height and I will cheat myself infinite energy real quick so I can use as many rewinds now that I want because whenever I'm going to show you something with nitro in mind I have to rewind and with this you can get up here so usually as a speedrunner you get up here you press rewind right here and do this because attacks in the air can stop your sideways momentum and go to the right which we, where we go back to momentum control which is very important right you see this this boosts me back to the right same thing with rewind attacks so yeah you can uh, get back oh get the back all the way over here And then you can go up here. Of course, here you can again use upwards momentum to get fa get faster up here. And you can use attacks to constantly be on the same wall and just go up this wall without needing another one. Oh, wrong button. And you can go all the way up there and just skip this whole thing and just go to Zakon immediately. The main thing is that Nitro does not only give you Nitro jumps and faster whirlwinders, but Nitro also gives you higher momentum controls. You saw that with the side momentum already, but you can also do it on these slip, uh, sling bars like this. Which... Uh, throws you way higher than usual. We as speedrunners use this to just run through rooms like this. As you can see, you can become really fast with this, right? So those are nitro jumps. Nitro jumps are actually a little bit higher when you do sideways attacks for them than upwards attacks, which is weird. We don't know why. You can kind of get the same height, but usually sideways attacks are are a little bit higher, just a little bit. So, that's how Nitro Jumps work. Now, let's go to a different part of the game. When you get to the August Fairgrounds, let me just give myself Nitro again, you already have Dash. Because when you get Dash, you lose your roll, which means roll cancelling with an attack does not, does no longer work because you just continue running anyway. But you can still do it with jumps, which gives you a slight boost in jumping distance. And when you do this off the ground, you actually don't lose your dash mid-air. Right? Just need to do a double jump for it. And you can dash again. Which means you have double the dash distance when you do this on the corner, right? And there is a way to get up there without needing to go around the whole place and get up to this platform up there. And I will show you what Nitro also can do because with Dash, your sideways jumps get so damn far. And you'll just see it. 
you see the speed that you get from this? And this is just one jump. You can do this again because you have double jump. So it looks like this. And we can just jump into cutscenes with it and just become super fast. Right? And with this you can also could kind of skip this. And then you can go here and press the button. So that's a thing. Um, also, by the way, don't do this in your actual run seal soft lock. Um, when you get to the button to open the door. <laughs> because you need to hit this loading trigger. Not this white one, the blue one. The big blue one right here. You need to hit this blue one uh, before you can hit the button up there. This one. This one right here. Or your character will soft lock because Echo will try to get down here to the door and activate the get him his monologue but can't get down there because the hatch is closed so it's soft locks here but this is a good uh, place to show you what nitro is used for but still this is not everything not really everything with roll cancel jumps with dash and nitro jumps with dash you can get some enormous distance between your jumps and also height so nitro plus double jump gives you a lot of height right if i double jump gives me a lot of height while dash gives me a lot of distance with this in mind there are some parts in levels like these where you can where you can skip certain arenas, certain parts of a level, certain doors, certain buttons. There are there are a lot of um, <laughs> different objectives that you can just skip with this. And that's why I said nitro is used for everything and needs is needed for everything. So right here we have a uh, checkbox right here which. Um, Let's me respawn here. And you have this red one right here, which is the arena fight. And you can actually jump up to this platform over here without hitting this box. Like this. You just need to hit the right height and the right distance for it. Like this. And then you can just skip the arena. Then of course you can just skip this whole... Just skip this whole right. Just go all the way to the button. But that's this thing, right? Now those were roll cancels. What Nitro is used for Nitro jumps in general. With dash Nitro jumps also. Roll cancelling jumps with dash in mind. The whole momentum control and whirlwinders. Let's go to the next very important thing. I'm gonna activate one hit kill so don't wonder. This just lets me kill everything in one hit, but I also die in one hit. So um, with this I can just go through arenas really fast. Because I don't want to show you how to fight. You have whirlwinders for those now. And but there's one last thing that actually gives you distance, and that is air levitation and air stalling. Air stalling is, the, is like the little brother of air levitation. Let me just get rid of these dudes. So. I bet you I can get to that platform over there without dash, without nitro, without face dive. So I just use double jump. And a little extra thing. So usually double jump does not get you here. Now I can I can unequip this and you will see that double jump will not get me there. Oh, it actually gets me there, but it's very close. Okay, let's just say it's a bad example then. But what makes this really easy 
or can make this really easy, is Timewinder actually. So you're thinking, well, Timewinder just hits enemies and opens some doors and is useful for whirlwinders. But what Timewinder allows you is something called air levitation. And to show you air levitation, I have to show you its little brother first, which is air stalling. Whenever you jump, you can hit all attack combos in the air for one time only. When you try it the second time and while you're still in the same jump, I guess, uh, it doesn't work. But you can stay in the air like this and it gives you forwards momentum. As you can see. With this in mind, you can do this. Which gets me way fast uh, way further, right? But that's air stalling. That's the, the little brother. It's like you use your tags, right? Now there are two levels to air levitation, right? The first one is when you use nitro, the second one is if you use time winder. You cannot combine these two, so using Nitro with Timewinder doesn't change it, still uses the Timewinder version. But what's Ni what Nitro does is, you will see when I end my combo in the air, I will levitate forwards a little bit. Just a little bit. Usually, you fall down, you just fall down. Right, and on this angle, you just fall down. But, as you can see, you get this forward levitation, like this. The big version of air levitation is with Timewinder. And that's a strange one, we don't really know why this happens. But you have to throw your Timewinder either before you jump or while in the air, doesn't matter, you can... The, the important thing is it's outside of your inventory or outside of Echo. And when you then do your normal attack combo, you get an even greater levitation. So, you need to throw time winder somewhere and then do your air stall in the air. I usually combine this like this. And you get this really huge levitation bonus to it. Right? And if you combine this with Nitro and throw your Time Winder like this and do it twice because you have double jump and even three times because you can use Nitro resets and so on and so on. There's some very funny things you can do with it and I'm going to show you one very funny thing with it. This whole sequence here you can skip with this technique or with these techniques. So let me get all the way up here. So, this. I have it on me. I don't have dash, so let me get dash. Like this. Good. Now, this is very difficult and I might fuck it up, but let me just try to showcase it. Like this. I know this took a lot of rewinds and I have infinite energy right now, it's possible. Trust me, you, you can always do this first try, right, with just two rewinds. But that is an option of how to do it. So Nitro enables a lot of different skips. Another one that I want to show is the cultivar skip just called cultivar skip there's really nothing to it there is some some little trick you can do and 
I'm gonna show this whole room. Of course, I still kill enemies instantly. Don't take this seriously. It's just showcase. But before I show you the cultivar skip, I need to show you the next little trick that we have, which is camera manipulation. So the camera moves kind of on its own sometimes. So you see it, it goes to the right now, it stays on the right, but if I go up here, it moves. And there are some weird things uh, when the camera kind of wiggles around, but you can actually use parallel convergence to zoom the camera to different sides like this right and this allows you to actually look through certain walls and then use face dive to teleport through walls that you usually wouldn't be able to for example <clears throat> i'm sorry let me get nitro again like this I can now look through this wall right here and teleport to this. Or maybe sometimes I even get the camera higher, but it's very, very weird sometimes. With this in mind, you can actually go around here and you can teleport through this over here, through the wall, it's just a bug. But then up here, there is a flying enemy up here and you can't get to it like this. Right? The face dive doesn't work through this wall. But with camera manipulation, you can get high enough and then just teleport through it and skip the whole way going around it, doing the one arena that's to the right here and just continue. That's how camera manipulation works. Now the two last really big important things have that's these two skips alone or these tricks alone save three to four minutes. So I'm gonna show it here actually. So I have infinite energy, I can use all the rewinds, all my temporal pulse energy and all my chrono breaks so the way I want of course. In an actual game, you only have one chrono break, which is important for this one right now. There is a way to triple jump. So you have double jump. There is a way to triple jump. I'm gonna show it down here first, because camera. So you have a jump, and then you have a double jump. And your double jump resets whenever you hit a ground. So when you hit a ground, you can double jump again. And the first jump from the ground doesn't count onto the double jump. Which means if you hit the ground and then chrono break upwards into the air, you have your chrono you have your double jump back and can do a third jump. This looks like this. Okay. Very easy to understand, difficult to execute. Because you can combine this with Nitro, right? You can do this. And go way higher. Now, there is usually this ledge up here to the right. Where you get to with the roller coaster. You can reach that part without the roller coaster. Which is... To that which is done like this if I get this to work because it's a difficult skip it's like this you do two jumps you chrono break back and then you do a nitro dash attack to the right with the third jump that you get the important thing with this is you have to hit the ground first before you chrono break because you need to reset your double jump so not like this. This doesn't work. That's chrono jumping. 
And there is a... Wow. There is a major skip in fanlocks I'm gonna show at the end. Which you can do with Chrono Jumps. Where you basically combine everything you know right now. Except well windings, I think. You have Nitro, double jumping, you have Chrono Jump, you have camera manipulation into a face dive. So there is so many things Im important to the skip. But this door, right? We don't like this door, it's closed and we won't want closed doors, right? The button is up here. And you can see here this white box to the right of the button. That's its save point. So if you get in there, we respawn right there. There are spikes right here. So if we hit this white box and then die without falling back into this one, we spawn up here. Okay. And the thing with the door, with this gate right here, is it's not all the way to the to the wall. You can actually jump through there like this and die to the spikes. But it's not enough height. So how do we do it? We have a chrono jump. You are right. Oh, I need my time winder, thanks. That was too high. Still too high. Like this. I could just hit the wall up there and I die. Or oh, not hit the wall, hit the box. And then died. So I can just hit the button. And that's that's this skip. This skip is also known as 3SS because it skips three major skips that we used earlier to go around this whole thing right here, which I showed you in this video, right? I showed you the chrono jump to to skip the first one right here, the fall down at the very end, and the arena skip up there. And all of these three are skipped when you just do this, and then hit the checkpoint up there. This is called afterlife skip. An afterlife skip is when you die. Then hit a checkpoint and get reset to that checkpoint. And now for the finale, let me show you, in my opinion, the most difficult skip. I also did a video about this, which you can probably find on my channel, uh, which is called Fluking the Hardest Skip in Conversion Three Times in a Row. That was when I was still very bad at the game. So, this whole room starts like this. As you just saw, you come in, you teleport over to this part right here. Usually you, go, you do this puzzle section to the right, but you can just, with camera manipulation, you can just look through here and just hit that bulb at the bottom there, like this, and just teleport through here. That's a very difficult skip. Um, it, makes it, e it makes it easier to jump before you teleport just a little bit so you don't fall into spikes but it's it's just a minor thing it's not the important thing the important thing happens now after you get stash because you need to get dash to leave this room actually uh, I need nitro I don't have nitro give me nitro thanks so you can actually get up here with nitro and just Get all the way up here. And then there there are spikes and blocks over here. So you can't get further up, is what we thought. But you can just skip all the way going around here. With everything combined that I just taught, right? What I just taught you is Nitro Double Jump into Chrono Jump into Camera Manipulation into Face Life. And it works like this. You double jump, then you fall down. Whenever you hit the ground, you teleport back up. Make a third jump behind the speaker, and then you camera manipulate up. And teleport to this dude. And now, because we're back up here, we can just leave this room over here. 
and not need to go all the way around. Of course, again, I have a separate video on the skip, which you can just watch. But it's basically just double jumping, falling down straight because it's faster than straighting, chrono breaking back up, triple jumping, and then using camera manipulation to get to the enemy. This, together with the afterlife skip that you saw at the start of Fairgrounds, saves around 3 to 4 minutes of the game. This is everything I have to show right now. Maybe in a different video I will actually go through a run and just show all the actual skips that we do. But if you're really interested in speedrunning you can hop over to the Discord server, link is in the description, where we have a resource package chat where we just show all the skips. Right? We don't explain them, but we show them. We have clips of every single skip in the game that we found so far. And you can also just watch any kind of speedruns and just see now what we're actually doing on different occasions in the game. If you have any further questions, you can always, of course, leave a comment and I will try to answer them. Otherwise, again, join the Discord server and just ask in the right chats for it. Um, all the people over there are super polite and always happy to help. And that's everything for the tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed and learned. And I'll see you in the next video.